Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I want to discuss some of the secret features of rotors. So in front of me, we both have a large and a small rotor, and we pretty much know what their functions actually are by now, and it's pretty easy to manipulate them to do what you want. You can build pistons and all sorts of different functions. Now, I want to show you something a little bit different. Now, over here, we have a combination of both a large and a small rotor. And what this allows us to do is connect a large ship with a small ship. And I don't think that's even that's possible at all. So this is actually the one way of making that possible. So over here, we can simply do something like this. We can build up a few blocks. And then, for instance, we'll get ourselves a small reactor, place that on top. And if we go over to our control panel here and access it, we can actually see the small reactor is now showing up on our station's actual hood. Very interesting, very interesting indeed. So we can actually fully mess with that and control its functions. So let's actually have a little bit of a mess and turn this thing around. So we need to find the one that's probably set on nothing. And let's just increase the speed. So there we go, fully functioning. Now, let's show you how to actually construct one of these for yourself. Now, these can be built in survival as well as creative. So, down here in this little hole, we have the rotor. So, what I'm going to actually do is just build it from scratch. So, we've got the standard rotor. As it spawns, as you build it, it has that little bit of a lid on top. So, you're going to get your drill out, and you're just going to drill out the top of the drill. Well, you're going to drill out the top of the rotor area. So it's quite interesting this because it seems to have some weird sort of mechanical function. It actually feels like you're actually building it. And now what you need to do is you need to build a small landing gear. So let's get our small landing gear with a new small ship. Place that into position. And then what we need to do is build one block up. I'll show you why that. Because if you build it like that, the rotor automatically tries to connect in and it doesn't work. So we need to build it one up. So build one block and then place the rotor down. Now, with your drill once again, you need to drill out the bottom. So you just cut off the bottom and you delete your landing gear and now it's ready to be slid into position. So we need to push this down with the character. You can either header it, do whatever you want and it'll just slot straight into position like so. So this rotor should now function. So I'll just show you a little bit of the pipe there and we'll place ourselves a reactor down so we can see its function like so. And there's loads of applications for something like this. It means you can also use the small rockets and small Gatling guns on that block, like so. So you can actually build yourself a turret that is part of the same ship. So this is going to be really interesting to see what it says on the menu. So you see it says Gatling gun, rocket launcher, and they're all attached to our large ship quite securely and quite interestingly. So it's really exciting that we can build some smaller turrets. So we'll go to our final rotor, that I think is number 5. Oh, it should be set on 0, whatever one it is. And we'll just turn up the speed. And there we go. Functioning. Very exciting. Very interesting. Anyway, I'll show you some practical applications for this sort of system. So we've just entered into one of my secure airlocks. And you can see that we've got some lights going off as well as a door. So first off, we have the rotors here. And we have the small ship rotor connected up. So we've just got a basic sort of warning light because you can't use the small spotlights on the large ships. They're just too big. I mean, it's just it's just too big and too powerful to make an effective little warning light in an area like this. So by combining that, you can make a really nice spinning warning light to let you know that the airlock's prepared to be open. And we can also access the door from the large ship control panel. So if we step over here and we open the door, the door will actually open from there and I would get sucked out realistically here but since we've got you know, some sort of weird pressure system in Space Engineers everything seems to be fine but that's just an interesting sort of use so say for instance you could be up in the command room and you could open the airlock to let another ship in so you just reverse that function and let the airlock slam back into position really interesting and if you want to see that airlock design I'll put a link in the description to the steam workshop page right let's move on to another function so another place where this comes really in handy is when you're building turrets now you can build large turrets on large ships but they just don't have the same sort of excitement as sticking a small ship with a lot of firepower to a large ship and previously there was two ways of doing it you can either do it with landing gears or the merge block 
But the problem with the merge block is you can't connect it with a large ship. The small ship cannot connect to a large ship. So this is an alternative method. Now if we head over here and we press 8, we can place down our rotor. Now all we have to do is actually just drill out the rotor itself, like we were doing before. And once this is drilled out, it means we can actually take the component and shove it back in. So now we need a small ship build, so we'll start that small ship by placing it in the center, topping it up with one block and going back to the rotor. So on top of that, we're actually just going to build nothing for the moment until we drill it out. So we want to be careful, we want to drill that block first and now we're going to cut that off and push the small rotor into place. So it should just click in like so, perfect. Now what we want to do is to make this a little bit, little bit easier we're going to copy that turret and use a merge block so it's just a little bit faster but in survival you could do it pretty much the same way so let's grab ourselves a merge block not a torch and place it on top so there we go now we just need to simply cut off the underneath base just look at all that weight we're saving as well with this method it's immense and now we need to add ourselves a merge block adapter that's about center and then we're just going to copy this in place but obviously you have to build this on in survival we've stuck that out a little bit too far but it's just for demonstration purposes and line that up a little bit more to the right and click that into place perfect absolutely perfect now we need to see if this thing will function so we'll place down ourselves an emergency testing cockpit we'll place it down there and we'll go inside and we can actually see what we're working on here but first of all I'm going to delete that turret because it seems to be blocking our actual view and there we go so there's the turret on top now we want to see if we can actually control that turret from inside here so we've got access to it you can tell by the orange we've got access to all its gyroscopes and access through the merge box now we need to check out if we've actually got access to the rotor that it's on so we're going to begin this by actually just moving it and seeing if the rotor will move. So the rotor that we actually just moved then was the actual barrel. See how the barrel's tilted down towards the ground. So we need to find uh, the other rotor. That's probably going to be a white rotor. Just got to look through the controls and try to locate it. Now this is always a problem, but hopefully there'll be hotkeys sooner or later. So we won't have to fanny about going through all the controls. So that's already moving apparently. So is that one. Now is this one the turret? Yes, that is the turret. So we can actually command that turret from inside. Obviously it won't be the most accurate. I'd rather have a man actually on the turret controlling it. And if we scroll back down and try to relocate the turrets, wherever they may be, and we turn that rotor off, for instance, and then we go actually and mount the turret itself. And we can actually have full control with the turret we could move it up and down but i'd have to disengage that from the large ship as well and we have access of course to our firepower of many many rockets that's absolutely devastating if it hits a target and all you could do to finish this thing off really is just make it a little bit tighter to the deck so you can move that merge block pretty pretty much inside that square and it'd be flat to the hull and it wouldn't be as much of a weak point. I would like to thank you guys for watching, and especially the guys that decided to point this out to me. It's an extremely useful feature, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.